It's been six years since a 31 year old Scottsdale woman was brutally killed in her own home. As Allison Feldman entered the prime of her life, her father says her future was taken away. It took three years to solve that murder thanks to the help of familial DNA and evidence from the suspect's DUI arrest. But the motive still remains unknown. Fox 10's Justin Lum reports on the Feldman family's long wait for justice. When Allison Feldman decided on the college of her choice, her father Harley did not expect her to leave the cold of Minnesota for the desert of Arizona. Ultimately, she picked U of A. She couldn't wait to come down to Arizona. And once she was here, she fell in love with the campus and the people. Five years after graduating, Allison became a medical sales rep. Then she made the valley her home, buying a house in Scottsdale, 31 years old with a career, property, and a boyfriend. Because we uh, don't know what took place, uh, we, we investigate it as a homicide until we can rule that fact out. But on February 18th, 2015, life changed for the Feldman family. We knew something was wrong. She hadn't called all day. We hadn't heard from her the night before. Her phone was off. And sales, your phone's never off. Scottsdale Police Detective John Heinzelman called Harley. Called me and said to me, are you driving? And I said, yes. And he said, pull over. And I knew what was coming next. I just knew it. We've identified who the victim is, uh, Allison Feldman. Uh, who is the resident of this home. Allison's boyfriend found her murdered inside her home. This case was uh, one of the worst scenes that I've been to. Court documents reveal graphic details. Her killer strangled her, beat her, and sexually assaulted her with a beer bottle. The suspect used bleach or chlorine to clean up the gruesome scene, but a large pool of blood remained. How and why did this happen to a woman believed to have no enemies in a peaceful suburb near Pima and Thomas Roads. It could be somebody that lives in the neighborhood. It could be. It could also be somebody that doesn't live in the neighborhood. It could be a random act of violence. We simply don't know right now. This was a very uh, quiet neighborhood. This was something that uh, doesn't happen here in Scottsdale. And no signs of forced entry at Allison's home. Detectives collected more than 400 pieces of evidence as well as DNA from the glass bottle, furniture, and a doorknob. Detective Heinzelman says investigators initially looked at Allison's boyfriend as a person of interest. That's the first person we looked at, and uh, for any number of reasons, the fact that he called us means he has information that we need to know. And there's a tremendous amount of forensic evidence that we've obtained on this case, um, and we do have a DNA profile. Police did develop a partial DNA profile from the crime scene. Despite interviews with hundreds of people, still no leads on a suspect. It started to become um, that issue where we talk about um, the phrase cold case. Is this a cold case? We had our doubts. We were starting to have our doubts. Not because the police weren't doing really good work. It just wasn't leading to the suspect. As doubt grew, chance appeared in a meeting between strangers. See, Allison's mother, Elaine, accompanied her father, World War II vet Sid Schaffner, to Israel and Poland in 2016. Schaffner would be honored for helping liberate some 30,000 prisoners from the Dachau concentration camp in Germany in 1945. But during the trip, Elaine met former three-term Arizona Senator Barbara Leff and told her about her daughter's murder. Left's connections led to the Attorney General's office approving a critical move in the case. Enter the familial DNA search, a way for law enforcement to find relatives of the person they want to identify. At this point in late 2017, the technique had never been used in Arizona. The AG, Maricopa County Attorney's Office, and DPS went to work with Scottsdale Police. Familial DNA, think of that more like uh, casting a net over a large um, a large group of, of family members or what will be called first degree relatives of that unknown DNA profile. Remember the DNA profile from the Feldman murder scene? National databases could not come up with a match, but investigators now use familial DNA to find a partial match to a first degree relative, the suspected killer's brother, Mark Mitchum, who was serving time in an Arizona prison for child molestation. The way the system works is you look for that family lineage. If there had been not a family member that would have been in the system at this time, we would not have got a hit back. When the chief called me, um, I'll never forget this either. I just relaxed. A 
April 10, 2018, police arrested Ian Mitchum at the Phoenix Deli he worked at. A blood sample taken from him in a DUI arrest three years earlier had been stored as evidence. That was one month before Allison's murder. This newly acquired DNA profile matched the one developed from the crime scene. Detective Heinzelman says there's no personal link known between Mitchum and Allison. We haven't found uh, any specific motive. That's actually something that I'm still conducting some investigation to determine is there a link uh, that we haven't seen yet. Mitchum was also arrested for aggravated DUI in 2016, accused of driving drunk with a minor. Police say he admitted to having alcohol issues, but denied knowing Allison Feldman, said he never went inside her home. Today, Allison's parents still visit Scottsdale. They stay in her home, keeping her memory alive. We're missing a life that we had with her. We're missing grandchildren we won't have from her. We're, we're missing all the good things that would happen in her life. Trial has been delayed to January 2022. The pandemic could push it back further. The long wait for the Feldmans continues, knowing justice is in reach. Justin Lum, Fox 10 News. Mitchum is facing charges of first degree murder, sexual assault and second degree burglary. And again, trial is set for January 4th, 2022.